Welcome to Victory in Europe Day, the 8th of May 2020, when we celebrate the defeat of fascism in Europe 75 years ago. Now, the last time the country was in lockdown, it was in World War II. And I want to talk to you about the home front and then the wider war. First, the home front. What did the war mean for Stowe? Well, first, 1,000 windows had to be blacked out. That took a lot of time. Second, a lot of the cellars, a lot of the rooms on the ground floor where Plug Street is, were solidified, cemented, uh, made to withstand bomb blasts. Third, we have buildings like the one behind me, air raid shelters. I'm in the woods behind Warpole, and this is where boys were sent when the air raid sirens went off. Quite how much of a direct blast they would have been able to withstand, we don't know. But on the 9th of May 1940, we soon found out how many bombs the building could withstand. Because a German bomber, probably on its way back from Birmingham or Coventry, dropped a stick of bombs on the South Front, forming a perfect arc. There's a huge amount of noise. A lot of the windows on the South Front were blown in, quite a few of the frames were destroyed. Shrapnel landed in the statue of King George I on the North Front and it was found above the bedstead of a boy's bedroom in Chatham. Now that must have been pretty frightening. The next day the boys were sent out to pick up shrapnel to make sure that the game of rugby against Oundle could take place in the afternoon. That wasn't the only time bombs fell. We had several other near misses, but that, that was the closest that Stowe got to being destroyed in World War II. The older boys, the boys who were over 17, enlisted in the local volunteer force. They worked with the, the Home Guard, becoming part of Dad's army. They would patrol the grounds, they would search the temples and the grottos for suspected German parachuters. Other boys were sent up onto the roofs. They were there to make sure that any German incendiary bombs were quickly swept off the roof and sent into the gardens, into the grounds where they were disarmed and became um, redundant. Um, elsewhere in the school, life was all about digging for victory. The Bourbon playing fields were dug up. They were, they were growing potatoes and oats up there. We had haystacks on the south front in order to deter enemy planes from landing. Life was very different. There was rationing, powdered eggs, bully beef, petrol rationing. Stowe was quite remote, quite hard to get to. A lot of the staff complained about the journey time and how much petrol they were eating up. 20 members of staff went to fight. The 17 and 18 year olds enlisted in the army. The school roll went down to 460. It must have been extremely worrying times for everyone at Stowe. Now, after we've looked around here in the wilderness behind Warpole, I want to go to Chapel because in Chapel, we commemorate the other side of life during World War II. And those, those are the boys who are out fighting, nearly 2,000 of them. And I want to talk about them when we get into Chapel next. Here we are in the chapel at Stowe, which was built between 1927 and 1929 to a design by the Scottish architect Robert Lorimer, reusing columns from the Temple of Concord and Victory, reusing the cedar panelling from the Aurelian Room in the main mansion. But the part of the chapel that I want to concentrate on today is behind me. It's the memorial to everyone who gave their lives in World War II. There were 2,000 servicemen who served in the air, on sea and on land. And of those 2,000, 270 were killed. That's a proportion of nearly one in seven of the old Stoic population at the time. 242 of the old Stoics who served came back 
with military decorations. Among them, there were two old stoic Victoria crosses. Now, amongst those names are the famous Leonard Cheshire, Jock Anderson, both study mates in Chatham, exactly contemporaries, both fought with great distinction. Leonard Cheshire, at the age of 25, was the youngest group captain in World War II, in Bomber Command. He was the first pilot to fly over 100 sorties over enemy territory. And he was chosen by Winston Churchill to be the British observer in the plane that dropped the atom bomb, the second atom bomb, over Japan, over Nagasaki in World War II, 1945. Jock Anderson served in the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders Regiment. He won his Victoria Cross on St George's Day in 1943 for an act of gallantry which we still commemorate in this chapel. Anderson, with four officers and 40 men, took out three German machine gun positions and a mortar unit at the Battle of Longstop Hill in Tunisia, a heroic achievement that echoes the achievements of Viscount Cobham at the Battle of Venlo. So behind me, we have the names of some of the great heroes, the distinguished old Stoics, who gave the ultimate sacrifice, giving up their lives. Amongst them, RAF heroes, squadron leader David Pemberton, George Barclay, Flight Lieutenant John Dundas. His action in November 1940 destroyed the plane of Helmut Wick, probably the Luftwaffe's uh, greatest fighter race in the Battle of Britain. They're all remembered here. They're all equal in glory and in death. And we salute them. Old Stoics fought at Dunkirk, the Battle of Britain. They fought their way through northern Italy. They were in Singapore. They were in the Far East. They fought at D-Day through the Battle of, for Northern France, distinguished themselves in the Battle of the Bulge. David Niven, colonel at the time, fought and won a medal for gallantry. There was even an old Stoic present at the surrender of the 25th German army. And I want to leave you with these words. They were written by an old Stoic airman who was killed in the dying days of World War II. And this is what he said. His name is John Benson, and he wrote this poem for his mother. Tomorrow shall be ours, and we shall cast a girdle round the world of mutual amity, and lay upon earth's sweating brow the garland of eternal peace. So with that garland of eternal peace, we remember all of those who fought and died to preserve liberty and freedom and dignity for everyone. Thank you.